Climate change is probably the story of our generation and will be the issue of our generation. And we've all seen the movie years ago with uh, by Al Gore where he goes up and up and up and you can see the CO2 rising and we're even higher than that now, you know. Um, and that movie was nine years ago and you know he was talking about a warming planet. We are long gone from that. We are, you know, we're so much further into this sort of fire pot. And 2019, for sure, will be the hottest year until 2020. I, we are approaching the end of the age of people on this planet and living as we know it within our lifetime. I'm not a fatalist. I don't think that we, we are doomed, unless you believe in something else <laughs> in the sky. <laughs> We still have a chance, absolutely. There's no doubt about that. We just need to try and we just need to get everybody on board. That's the problem. If we can adapt our behavior and become more green conscious, we can still limit the impact that we are having on the planet. We're going to make a, an impact, but I wonder if we, we haven't gone too far. The cost of the human on the planet is too high. A whole philosophical outlook on life is 100% based on us and our survival, not us in the environment. We live luxurious lives We compared to the rest of nature and there is your incredible distinction between the rich and the poor. That's the socio-economic problem. But as a species, we live a luxurious life, and but we cannot stop what's happening. We are just one species and we might be the next extinction, but it's okay. The Earth would keep on living for hundreds of millions of years. It's an area that's not influenced by human development, by pollution. It's high up in the mountain, so it is assumed to record just the global kind of or the natural state of the atmosphere. So you have this pre-industrial revolution level and then you have this very clear curve of increasing carbon dioxide on the atmosphere and that kind of triggered the idea that because of our, uh, the consumption of fossil fuels we are changing the compo composition of the atmosphere. We have all this excess carbon, so what we're starting to see is that the oceans are responding by taking up a lot of this carbon. Whether that is ongoing and will create a balance, I'm not sure. So that's one big investigation. Another one is, I think, how important it is to look at a global picture. A lot of change in how in, in the current understanding of climate, uh, of how the climate works and how we can understand climate change started in the 70s when we started to put satellites in around the earth and we actually started to have a fully global picture of how things are changing. So I think a big discovery for us lately has been the marriage between in situ operations, so going to sea, getting data, putting in the hard effort of just getting oceanographic data with this global view. We can actually go forward or back in time with satellites. Since just before the Industrial Re Revolution, our planet has warmed already by one degree. 
and the ocean has absorbed most of the heat from the atmosphere. At the same time as the ocean warms, it changes the environment that all the different species in the ocean live in. And so those species either have to adapt or they die off. With global warming, the temperatures goes up too much or down too little, too much in other areas of the world. And fish, and specifically waterborne organisms, most of them have a very small survival, when you say, window. They can only survive higher than a certain temperature and lower than another temperature. And that's, that's only a degree or two. So we're following specific species or a specific population and see how changes even in half a degree of temperature will affect their distribution. We're in the, in the middle of the fire. I mean, climate change is here to stay. The effects are devastating. Uh, storms in some areas are becoming more intense. For example, on the, the Indian Ocean, uh, recent research by people at WITS has shown that there are an emergence of very high energy uh, tropical cyclones that in the recent past that didn't really exist on the Indian or haven't been recorded very uh, haven't been recorded in the past decades and now suddenly they're starting to appear like Cyclone Kenneth and Cyclone Idai which were very intense events. It's difficult to pinpoint climate change absolutely as a cause but there is a, a climate signal that is changing some of the properties of the intense storms. We're here for the research but obviously for the benefit of society and uh, you're always trying to sort of like inform as to and make your work as widely uh, available. And I think obviously uh, it's important to collaborate with government. I mean, that's part of this project is uh, Department of Environmental Affairs has a stake in this uh, research itself. It sponsors uh, um, the, the research and, um, you know, it, but I, I, it's very difficult. <laughs> You can put out the information, say this, these are the things that are happening and obviously it's then up to the policy makers to uh, make decisions. Yeah, I think the focus must be more on uh, the politicians right now to get them to understand how it's really important. Because as scientists, we can uh, publish papers and say what's happening, but the real people who can actually make the change are the politicians. We've got to get their attention and that they understand that we have to put systems in place to try and slow down. So, you know, we've got the Paris Agreement, we've got all these large policy documents that are guiding, you know, your big stakeholders, your, your, um, your presidents, your prime ministers to try and guide environmental policy. So that's what we're aiming at. The problem is when ca some countries don't agree to the, the, palace, the Paris um, policy. The United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord. The problem is it's so far away for a political cycle that it becomes a, 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 poli a, a, a politician will, because it's in the nature of the political process to look at relatively shorter uh, decisions or time frame decisions because of budget, because of elections. We all know that that, 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 that kind of rules the, the way polit politics are made. As the ocean warms, it physically expands. So we've already had half a meter of sea level rise. That is just because the oceans have warmed and expanded. Sea level is actually a, a great example to actually see the change, the impact of cl climate change on our oceans. A lot of the focus recently has been on trying to know how much the sea level will increase. 